Okay, let's turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called. I won't stop emphasizing this. Don't stop till you lay hold on what? Eternal life. Eternal life is bigger than what you ever imagine. Eternal life is deep. I wish I have time to begin to explain to you what eternal life means. It means the life that now is in Christ and the life that is to come in Christ. You know the life that is to come in Christ? Let me give you an example. The Bible says when he rose from the dead, the disciples were gathered. He just walked in. The door were closed, but Christ just walked in. That's eternal life. Well, we just finished preaching and tell you, see you later. And the next minute, I call you from the UK. That's eternal life. Prophet, you're thinking about it. Don't think about it. That's eternal life. They saw him. You see, he even told Thomas, he said, put your hand. In other words, you, he's, he's not a ghost. He's not a, a figment of imagination or what. He's, he's, he doesn't fade away when you probably, you know that thing they show you in the movie. When you try to touch a ghost, you'll be doing like this. No. Jesus said, put your hand, touch, feel it. It's me. But you see, he doesn't need the door to open to enter. He doesn't need the door open to open to go out. That's eternal life. It's only eternal life that will make a castle assault eight times and you come out on scratch. Eternal life. The car will squeeze and they'll be asking, did anybody survive this thing? And you came out unscratched. No headache, no, no skin pain. Eternal life. It's eternal life that made Philip to finish preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch. And the next place they saw him was in Asazo Street. He was just talking. Ah, ah, eternal life. Listen, is it possible to live it now? Yes. Even those who don't have eternal life are living it. Does witches need anything to appear in their meeting? You've seen some, watch some, this they say he was just flying past and he fell. Huh? What was he using to fly? Aircraft. You see, it's called witchcraft. In your eternal life is something called Godcraft. I want to bring you to this point. Where you can have peace knowing that I have laid hold on eternal life. He said, fight. It's a fight. It's not fun. Fight the good fight of faith. Till you lay hold on eternal life. That's what I've been trying to. All the things about this whole audacity of faith. It will not end well if you have not. If you didn't at the end of the day lay hold on eternal life. Eternal life is beyond that you go to heaven. Listen. If I say this now, theological minds won't believe. You're not going to live in heaven. And you're never going to live in heaven. 
the highest you can go to is heavenly places. The Bible says when Jesus will, will appear, rapture, we will be caught up to be with him in the air. There will be party. That's the marriage of the bride and the lamb. And after that, after that, there is a new heaven and a new earth. You see the earth descending from heaven. We are going to, the earth he has given to the sons of men, we still remain the sons of men. Even after rapture. But what will happen to that new earth is that all these things we experience now are wiped away. The government is no, it's no longer the God of this. Satan will no longer be the God of this world. It will be said that the, 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 the kingdom of our God, this kingdom has become the kingdom of our God and of his dear son. So, if you don't learn to live eternal life then, you can't live there. If you don't know, learn now how to live eternal life, now. you see all this training we are doing in the church is to train us to live eternal life. And all this can be achieved by faith. Are you following me here? On Wednesday, I began to show you how to take actions to get your desired result. And I told you there is an attitude called the attitude of faith. And I showed you on Wednesday that did you notice that everybody Jesus healed took action. I stopped by showing you John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9. The, the guy that Jesus healed by the porch called Bethesda. Bethesda. The Bible said that, that that man has been there for 38 years. And he said to Jesus, said, would that be made whole? He said to Jesus, every time I try to enter into the pool, somebody else get there before me. That's why I've been stranded on one spot for 38 good years. The man had been there before Christ was born. You know what baffled me? Jesus did this. Okay, let me help you. He said, take up your bed. Arise, arise, take up your bed and walk. In other words, listen to me, sir. Everything you have you have desired, everything you have looked up to God for, everything you have prayed for that you have not come. It's not because they've not been given to you. It's just because you have not been able to take it. There must be a rising. There must be an action from your side to be able to do what God, to be able, for you to be able to receive what God has made available for you. Am I talking this morning? Every time God speaks to you, if, for instance, when he said to Peter, come, Peter said, Lord, Jesus was just walking on the sea. He was the most showing us eternal life. There was no boat anymore. The Bible said there was no boat anymore. He looked around, looked around and said, do I really need boat? On top of water, he began to walk. When they saw him, Peter said, come. As soon as Peter, he said, come. As soon as Peter take, took that step, the power, the grace, the glory, the audacity, Everything about creation was suspended to obey Peter. Just the way they obey Christ. Because the word of God, listen to me, the Bible says what he says to one, he says to all. Everything was suspended, Peter began to walk. Every time God speaks, there is a power that backs up that word. That listen, that if anything opposes that word, instead of that word not coming to pass, heaven and earth will pass away. You see, every time you read that word, your, your, what not comes to your mind is, is for some people. It's at the end. It's at the end of the world. Heaven and earth. No, no. What God is saying is that, listen, he's telling you that his word is powerful, potent, that the efficacy of his word can never fail. Instead of it failing, heaven and earth will wipe out. Am I communicating here? Look at something in John chapter 4. From verse 49. Because a lot of, a lot of us wait... We are just waiting. You're just waiting for. Imagine that Peter was waiting for the sea to freeze up before he can walk. 
it won't be recorded that he walked upon water. Because I've 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 gone to I've gone to Chicago when it was winter, and the whole of Lake Michigan was freezing. People were walking on a whole lake, very massive. People were walking on it, doing some of that thing because it's frozen. It was so cold that it's frozen. As at that time, you are not walking on water, you're walking on ice. That's what many of us do. We are waiting until the water gets frozen before we can. Hey, I cannot take step. That's not miracle. That's not eternal life. It doesn't reflect divinity. Look, there's a life God wants us to live. It's a life of wonder. Where you counter the expectation of the wicked. Where your life is directly opposite what the wicked expect. Have you not read that Christ is the author? If you, <laughs> how can you conclude the case you didn't? You are not the starter. You are not the one who will finish it. He said, "Look at it. Look at it. Because many of us wait." Look at this man. He said, there's this noble man that came to Jesus and said, Sir, my child is dying. My child is dying. And Jesus said, go thy way, thy, thy son leave it. And the man did what? The man believed the word that Jesus has spoken to him. And what did he do? He kept crying after Jesus. He kept praying about it. No, I'm showing you the attitude of faith. I told you that faith has an attitude. I'm showing you now the attitude of faith. The man said, the Bible said, Jesus said, Go, thy son is healed. That son is and the man left. Oh, go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. I want to show you something. And as he was now going down, his servant met him and said unto him, Thy son liveth. Look at what the man said. Then he inquired to them at what hour when he began to amend. And they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour. The fever that left him. Look, we'll go to the next verse. So the father knew that it was the same hour that Jesus said unto him, Thy son. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I read that to ask you this question. Why is it that you have not received that thing that God sent since last year? All the prophecy that we are giving to you that you will get married this year. You will do this this year. This will happen this year. Why didn't you receive it? Your attitude. You see, the word that was spoken to you lacked the attitude of faith. In Hebrew, the Bible said because they didn't mix it with faith. You see, Theologians have taught you people wrongly when it have to do with the issue of faith. Because you know what they told you? They said, you've got to be stubborn in the spirit. Pray, pray, push, pray, pray, hammer, push until something happens. Pray is not every issue you pray until something happens. When you have received the word from the Lord, stop praying, go and rest. after you have received the word from the Lord is doubt I don't know if I'm helping somebody this morning go for thy son leave it thank you sir <laughs> no argument I need no other argument I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that He died for me. Many of you don't know that what has kept you where you are now is argument with God. Argument. God gave you a word. You're saying, "Lord, how do I know that it's going to happen? Are you stupid?" Who do you think you're asking? How do you know that it's going to happen? 
No, who do you really think you are talking to? When you need them to pray, who do you think you are talking to? Listen, sir. You are talking to the person who nothing is impossible. If God says that this microphone I'm holding now is a tree, it automatically turns to a tree. He wouldn't need any process. It just becomes a tree. Why? Because everything he says is himself. What makes you believe that you have to pray for many years before God answers that prayer? It's theologians that taught you wrongly. I hope you know that these guys were not born again. Talk to me. You still love me? That's why I'm telling you the truth. Because of the love. Why do you be, why what makes you feel that God doesn't want to answer your, your prayer? What does he do in heaven? Guy, have you not read? He said the Bible said the, his eyes run to and fro to show himself. He's running, looking for who he will show himself strong and mighty on his behalf. This is what God, and then you think that your prayer, he won't answer it. Who taught you? Who taught you that theory? That you know, you know, you need to hit your head on the ground. You need to cry. You need to cry. You need to cry. You need to hit your head on the ground and cry and cry and look before God answers your prayer. How do you really see this our Father in heaven? How do you see Him? The Bible says, "How much more will our heavenly Father give good things to those that ask Him?" But when you finish asking Him, what do you do? James 1 from verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, if any of you lack car, if any of you lack money, if any of you lack good job, if any of you lack good marriage, if any of you lack good companion, if any of you lack anything you lack, he said, let him ask of who? God, who giveth what? Unto how many men? How many men? How many men? All men liberally and does what? And upbraided not. And what? He shall what? He shall give him. He shall be given him. He said, but let him what? Ask in faith. Not what? Not in wavering. For what he that what? Wavereth is like what? The wave of the sea that is driven what? Like the wind. He said, he said, for let him not that man think that he shall what? Receive of the Lord. Hey! Hey! For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now let's read it from message translation. Let's read for message, message translation. Give it for me. He said, if you don't know what you are doing, you don't know why things are happening the way they happen in your life. He said, pray to the Father. He loves to help. And he will, he, you will get his help. And won't what? Be condescended to when he won't look down on you. You see, a lot of you feel that God answered pastor's prayer faster than he answered your own. Wait, let me ask you a question. If, if, beloved is asking me for something now, and Prince Testimony is asking me for something, who do you think I'll give his own first? Testimony, of course. Testimony, of course. And you know, I won't look down on her that she's a child, because she's the one I'll pay attention to first. Many of you feel that God answer pastor's prayer far more than no he doesn't answer pastor's prayer much more than your own the only difference is that pastor exercises faith more than you do pastor understand the attitude of faith to receive what he asked for but you don't know but he said ask what believingly without what a second thought but when you are asking you are thinking of your uncle you are thinking of the, your boss. You are even thinking that if they don't do the uh, some of our uh, sisters, if they don't do it, if you use what you have to get what you want. Now, if they don't, if they don't want to, I just know what to do. Olodo. 
when will you how long will you take what you have to get what you want very soon that thing you have will wither you know not say that thing they expire very soon that thing you have will soonest because listen to me listen ah the beautiful ones are not yet born very soon some places will begin to sack the attention will reduce the traffic will, will vanish you see now they are queuing very soon there will be no queuing you will tell me what you will not use if you don't develop faith now are you here with me no second thought he said people who worry their prayers are like what pastor you seen this they worry their prayers how do you worry somebody insistent or God that they talk that ah, you own this thing too much <laughs> that's why Jesus said you see these things are scattered in the Bible that's why Jesus said he said you think that repeating prayer will make you have your answer you say you think that God that's why God will hear you quickly are you here with me he said worry their prayer is like what wind whipped waves go on to the next verse 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 Seven. he said don't think you are going to get anything from the master that way adrift like sea keeping all options open let's look at it from new living translation if you need wisdom ask our generous and he will give you he will not rebuke you for asking hold on pastor you mean as I am now, if I ask God for house in Lakey, he won't rebuke you for asking. You know many of you have never sat down to reorganize your life and say, I desire a good life. So what did Jesus die for? I have come that you might have life and have it. He said, but when you ask, be sure that your faith in God is in God. Don't waver. For a person with divided loyalty is what? Is uns as unsettled as the wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by wind. He said, such person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They what? They are stable in everything they do. Give me tip, tip. Just make sure you ask empowered. Empowered by confident faith. Without doubting. Without doubting that you will receive. For the ambivalent person believes one minute and doubt the next minute. Be his undecided. When you become undecided, you see, he, he just finished praying. And then you say, How far? He tell you, My brother. <laughs> Have you not seen people like that before? Did, did you notice what happened to the Shunammite woman when the son died? He kept the, man, the, son, the, the, the son on the bed of the man of God and was going to look for the man of God. The husband said, it's all well. He said, it is well. Read your Bible. She was set for the resurrection of the son. There is nothing that would not oh, There is nothing that would have stopped that boy from rising because the faith of the mother was pulling her back, him back to life even before the anointing came. Listen to me, sir. No matter the anointing, if faith is not in place, the anointing will have nothing to rest upon. Am I talking here? Sure I'm talking? Jesus said in Mark 11.24, he said, when you pray, when you pray, believe, when you pray, believe that you have those things that you have prayed for and you will receive them. Now, look at it. Please put it from King James. I want King James. Put it in King James. Look at it. There are two key words I want you to look there. Or three. 
whatsoever thing you desire. I've never seen a God that gives open check like our Father. Whatsoever thing you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. Hello? Believe, receive, and then you will have them. Believe, receive, and then you will what? You will have them. Believe, you receive, and then you will what? Hold on. I don't have time, but I'm going to give you some scriptures. Go and read. When you get home, read 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 down. The Bible said that Solomon went to offer sacrifice in Gibeah, And that same night, God came to him and said, Solomon, Solomon, what do you want? Solomon said, Lord, I want you to give me wisdom, discernment of spirit, and to be able to judge your people and blah, 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 blah. And the Lord said, you have it. Notice, prophet, God, did God lay hand on him? Okay, God breathed upon him. Huh? What did God say? He just spoke. You know what Solomon did? Solomon thanked him. The next day he sat on the throne. The, the next very next day, two women came. Uh, this one, I get the child. This one said, I get the child. This one said, this one. Solomon opened his mouth and began to demonstrate wisdom. He didn't have to ask, Have I really received? Have I are you, are you sh- do I really have wisdom? Uh, honey, the way I'm talking now, am I talking like I have wisdom now? When God finished talking, stop talking, go and act. Did you hear what I said? When God is done talking, do what? Shut your mouth. Go and take action. That's the right attitude to faith. Fight everything that will stop you from taking action. Are you here with me? Sure you're here with me. Let me show you another typical example. God walked... Angel walked to Mary. Hey Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Bless you among women. <laughs> Mary said, what kind of salutation is this one? Nobody has ever greeted me like this. Ah, you don't a virgin in Israel. Nobody greets his virgin in Israel. Blah, 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 blah. Man said, the Lord has favored you. You're going to carry a virgin, a child. And you're gonna... Mary said, ah, ah. Oh, God, why are you talking like this? Do you not know that uh, something happened before a woman gets pregnant? I'm not, I've never even known a man in my life. He said, the power from on high shall come upon you. And then you shall be... Mary said... Are you furry? Hey! Be unto me according to the word of the Lord. Oh. You know, you don't believe that that's what happened. With excitement, Mary jumped and said, Hey! Be unto me. Read it from other translations. You will get this the gist. She ran. She ran. And he said, Hey, hey, hey. You know that your cousin that they say is, is, is barren. He said, She's not pregnant. Mary said, Are you furry? No, I'm going to see. She ran. By the time she got to where Elizabeth is, the child in the womb of Elizabeth began to live for the child in her own womb. So between where the angel met her and Elizabeth's house, conception took place. Mary would have delayed the coming of Jesus, the birth of Jesus, if she had gone back home and said, what is he talking about? That thing he's talking about. <laughs> Are you really sure that man is? is who is even that man? I said, Joe. Joe. Joe, come. Come. I, want, I have gist for you. I have gist. You know, some of you have gisted away your miracle. Joe has nothing to do with it. It's my encounter. It's my dealing with God. Joe. When I'm done with God, we can do boyfriend and girlfriend. But for now, God is dealing with me. Listen to me, sir. 
if your action hasn't yet become stupid in the eyes of men you are not ready acting you are waiting for your friend to help you analyze it that's why they have paralyzed your miracles sometimes analysis are not good they are paralysis Are you still here with me? In First Samuel 1, if you read from verse 12, the Bible said that a woman called Hannah, Hannah was barren. And the husband loves her so much. Because she was barren, the husband has married a second wife. The second wife has even given birth to children. But this guy, this woman goes to Shiloh every year crying. And this particular year, the sorrow was too much because the woman the second wife has messed her had made life miserable for her so she was on the altar praying the priest Eli was sitting down you know pain that couldn't you couldn't voice out pain that has seized your oh are you here the pain has seized her voice she was just mumbling words the bible says her lips were moving but sound wearing coming out. The prophet got confused. What is that woman? Get away from here. It's too early to be drunk. He says, I'm not drunk. I'm pouring the sorrowfulness of my heart to God. He said, I'm a woman of a sorrowful heart. My heart is wounded. Blah, blah, blah. I'm asking God. There's something I'm asking. I'm begging God. The prophet didn't know what that thing is. He just looked at her and said, Go thy way in peace. The Lord grind the heart, your heart desire. The Bible said the guy left. Read your Bible. The Bible said, and she was no longer sad. Sadness disappeared. Listen. Listen. Anytime you are trusting God for something, and you have prayed, you studied the word of God, you've seen what the word of God said about that thing, stop getting anxious. Stop getting agitated. Stop getting worried. Wake up in the morning with joy. Are you listening to what I'm saying here, sir? I'm not afraid of what the year holds. I decide what is going to happen within the year. How can God told me it's my year of manifesting light? And then I go home and I'm sad. And I'm afraid of what's going to happen this year. What I do is that when I get home, I pop wine. Oh, glory be to God. Lines are falling in place and places for me. Yay! I have goodly heritage. The Lord said it's my year of manifesting light. Gentiles are coming to my life. Kings are coming to the brightness of my rising. This year, this is going to happen. Ay, 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 ay. Listen to me, sir. If you don't get to the state where your excitement begins to show God that you're ready, you won't have what you're looking for. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Be bold to act on God's word. Be excited when God speaks. Are you following what I'm saying here, sir? Are you following what I'm saying here, sir? If you don't learn to exercise your faith to receive Believe that you have it. The said, believe when you finish praying. Believe that you have it. When you are done. That's what Paul says. Be anxious for nothing. But the nothing by prayer and supplication. With. Why did he end it with thanksgiving? You Because you know you have received. And you father, father, thank you for that car. Ah, uh, When it's raining, you say rain. This might probably be the last time you will drench me. <laughs> the next time my <laughs> you will be fighting with my wiper blade <laughs> my castle are you from says that you see listen listen the world we live in responds to words the world we listen will listen oh how do I say to you how do I say to you you pray for promotion you pray for promotion. You pray for promotion. You believe that God has had you. Father, thank you. Oh, thank you for my promotion. Thank you for that managerial position. Oh, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. When you wake up in the morning, you say, well, hey, guy, Chene, do wake up, wake up. Get to job, work early because you are a manager. People are learning under you. You have to be there. You have to be there as a manager, you know. You're... When you talk that way, 
and then get excited that way are you flam say you change your suit you look at the managers and say this is how the managers in this organization dresses this is how they dress if there is a door that managers pass through once in a while look at here look at walk through it and say thank you jesus this is our door this is where the managers walk through are you from sir when you begin to act this i'm not exciting you but when you begin to act this way heaven have no option You know what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3 verse, verse 21? He said, all things are yours. Hey. Boy, did you get that? All things. Jesus. Therefore, let no man glory in men. For all things. He said, what is he saying here? He said, don't glory in your manager. You see that Shakara man, your manager is doing He's a, he's a custodian of what belongs to your father. He says, so don't trust. When you try to respect him and he, he behaves as if he's deputy God, flush him. Because all things are yours. But you know what so many of us are? We are like the prodigal son, elder brother. Lord, you know I'm serving you. Lord, I'm serving you. But the prodigal son, where does it say Hafa? Where did it happen? Waiting this up. The prodigal son said, Pali Hafa. Uh, waiting to happen now. We can't live like this. Give me my own. This thing where you did, give me my own share. He went lavish it. You see, the Bible said, let him ask boldly. I'm not exciting you. I'm telling you what's real. I'm telling you what's obtainable. But I want one billion. And then you believe him. Why? Because all things are yours. I didn't say so. God said so. I didn't say so. Look at it again. All things. How many things? How many is all? All. All is all. All have no another definition. All. You know, the guy went lavish everything, came back. He said, I will arise. I'll go back to my... You know what made him arise? He said, how many of my father's servants have enough to eat and then, and then I'm here suffering? Why should I so Let me go back to my father. Anything that will happen, let it happen. He called and said, Father, you know I'm not worthy to be... I'm not worthy to be called thy son. Let me just be... Father said, no. A son can't become a servant. A son is a son. You know what? The father killed the fattest cow. The, fa the Bible said the fattest cow. The brother came. I'm not coming in. You see, that's why you get angry that somebody just came receive miracle. And then you're saying, ah! He has audacity you didn't have. He had the right attitude of faith you didn't have. He said, that boy that took every... You know what the father said to him? The father said, everything I have has always been yours. He said, father, you didn't even give me small, small chickly chicken to kiss so that me and my friend can do party. The father said, did you take? And I said, you shouldn't take. You never asked. I would say, ask and you, that you may receive, that your joy may be full. Listen to me. I will close with this. You see, anything you are comfortable with, God is comfortable with. If you are comfortable with poverty, God is comfortable with it. Put up the right attitude of faith and you will discover that all things are possible.